Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. We're in Big Data Applications and Analytics, and we're doing Lesson 12. And this is a, so quite an interesting lesson. It comes from a study on the, on the web funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. This study was done um, two and a half years ago, given uh, early to 2015. And it looked at four scenarios for healthcare in 2032. And uh, we will find that there were two positive scenarios. The one middle of the road, and nothing much happens, which is not uh, surprising. And one a very depressing negative one. Most of the trends were not so much to do with health, but just due to the life and politics and things like that. But they had implications for health. Um, so let's, let's get down. To Okay, so we have four sections to this lesson, one for each um, scenario. Here we have the middle of the road scenario, slow reform to better health. Here's the, all of these scenarios have nifty graphics. Uh, here we have one done on 20th of June at 9 a.m. by RWJF, which is the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Here we have these nice trends we're trying to weave together. Here we have data. And here we have, it's the community stupid. Um, here we have a different kind of person going into healthcare. My ability to change other lives is why I do this. Third generation physician. These are all the sort of uh, nifty uh, nuggets that uh, got produced presumably in the discussion. Individual accountability is a theme of this type of thing. Um, social networking uh, between the clinics, etc. Continuous quality improvement, engagement. So this is, remember, riddle of the road. This is this is what this particular study thought was very likely to happen. At least this. So so this is the expectable future of health and healthcare. The zone of conventional. Ex expectation, known trends, the expectable future. So it suggests that by 2025, prevention had taken off as opposed to, to uh, mending problems. And this was due to fiscal pressures, which uh, lead to new ways to contain costs, get people out of hospitals and away from doctors. Lots of companies launching products to improve health and remove and avoid disease. We saw all these, in fact, in the last lesson, all these wearables. So that's just saying pervasive wearables and pervasive actions to maximize how good those wearables make you look. People looking at their risk behaviors and changing them. Personalized health informatics, games and digital agents that uh, use the cloud to show how yucky that people are because they don't do the things that other people are doing. They expect new diseases to be treatments that come along like Alzheimer's and cancers. And then we have this science based on genomics, proteomics, and metabolomics to identify the nature of disease and the and to lead to some decisive cures. So they're suggesting, they're expecting that the current research on genomics and will lead to major new uh, approaches to these key deadly diseases. And these in innovations create opportunities for healthcare in the sort of community, outside the formal healthcare system. Individual genome mapping, well, it's now meant to be $1,000, under $100. That doesn't sound very, uh, that sounds pretty bound to happen. Biomonitoring devices that uh, well interface with smartphones. You sort of have that now. Natural language ontologies that make people allow, allow people to read these uh, dry, obscure uh, uh, medical knowledge places. That's more controversial, I would think. All right, so that's slow reform to better health. Here we have the depressing scenario. <coughs> health, if you can get it. Wow. So, afraid of job loss because they're obese, avoiding medical care, redistribution of providers, more, mid, 
more medical students looking for different ways to use their skills. Innovation last. Yo yo, you're on your own. I like that. So, how, anyway, and this is how them you can get it. Everyone's poor. Avarice in the intervention. Pretty amusing concept. Dollars, dollars, dollars. We can regrow your brain cells, but you can't afford it. Tough luck. All right, this is the sad view. Health, if you can get it. So again, this starts off with more stem in a society. The society is fragmenting into demographic, ethnic, and economic factions, each of which is looking out for its own interests at the expense of the others. The gulf between the haves and the have nots. The affluent cared little about society's most vulnerable. The ranks of the vulnerable keep expanding as unemployment bounces up and down around an average of 10%. It's actually better than that now, of course. Spiritual help arose, we all go sad. Wow, optimism, which Americans were once known, becomes a pronounced pessimism. Political and economic system that no longer cares about the poor and middle class. Notice these are not health statements, these are political statements. Social health declines terribly for the families and communities. As the psychosocial burden of illness spread apathy, and economic malaise and diminished American desire to interact with each other. Wow. 75 million Americans uninsured and the most majority underinsured. The cost of care continues to go up and up and up. Wow, that's the, the health that you can get it. Obviously, you can't get it. So let's assume we won't have this scenario. This is too depressing. We'll throw the we'll throw that government out, because that's this is a government of um, does not representing the people. All right, here we have big data, big health gain. So here we have, this is one of the two positive scenarios. Big data supports personal and community health, promoting social equity, exactly the opposite of the previous scenario. Social networking with a purpose. Here we have social networking, linking the world together. Data applied to population, digital health coach. New media, YouTube, TED, lectures on how to do things right. Education, lifelong learning, widespread involvement. So this is a totally opposite scenario, where instead of fragmenting into silos fighting with each other, the digital, um, growing digital um, ecosystem actually brings people together. All right, so this says, again, this starts off with a political statement. People go to new media, YouTube and TED. And this sort of implies that today's media loves bad news. Whereas people, if they wanted to cho choose their news, because they can do that, they're going to choose good news. Majority of the population and virtually all the youth are taking in this new reality of you choose great new things, new ideas, success stories, alternative conferences for the policy community and prompted government action to improve 21st century life. So these are all political statements that the improvement of health comes from the current internet and social networking prompting a somewhat a totally different attitude, which is a positive, outward-looking outward attitude. Cancers are cured, or managed, or preempted. Um, Alzheimer's, they all seem to be focusing on Alzheimer's. And this one says Alzheimer's is cured. I don't think the depressing one says that. People whose physical disabilities once placed them in homes can now be seen walking along the streets of America because of robots. That's pretty reasonable. Diabetes is now much easier to face because of uh, pancreatic uh, cells being grown. Pursuit of the triple A, better care, lower per capita cost, and improved population health. And cost reductions by large and in many places, state single payers. 
reduction in healthcare spending from remember 17% now to 15% by 2032. That I think is rather depressing. I would hope it will be lower than that. You would think it ought to be lower than that. Here are some nasty curves about healthcare spending as percentage of GDP. Here we are at 17%. Or actually, 17.5%, I think, from this plot here, as in 2012. And here's every other country way below, the largest being um, not quite clear which of these is the largest. Um, so, but anyway, it doesn't matter. They vary from 6 to 12%. And here's the US, way out of line at 17%. Here's another plot, this is focused on the US, showing the cost of various uh, parts of life. Here we have healthcare growing up from 1950 to 2010. Food and housing falling. Housing actually goes up a tiny bit, but food is falling, and housing and food are stabilizing at 12%. So that's sort of interesting, this uh, difference between health and the other areas. It's not, that's, and the fact that our medical care is so much more expensive, that's, that's not totally clear to me why, what actually causes that. So, uh, and um, so that's, that's worth uh, more work. All right, here we have the last scenario. And we have, of course, again, two slides on this scenario. The picture, new ethics of health, and this is another positive scenario. Knowledge revolution. Learning is entertainment. Community, people are healthy. This is one where there's a much more positive, self-motivated attitude to health. Unified biological theory. Eliminate no expectation. This is at least two um, last scenarios. Both have very positive views about uh, how the digital revolution is affecting people's uh, view of View of themselves and views of others. So, <coughs> so as it says, zone of high aspiration. Where the critical mass of people actually do visionary strategies and get, some, get success. So, it says here that actually we're much more robust than we think we are. We do not have to be uh, pampered and um, and this is actually a psychological view, or maybe the claims it was opposed by the people who think everything's a genome, or everything's a protein, proteomics rather. And system biology can, becomes a health ecology that encompasses all domains of <coughs> health. And you, innate, and you unleash the innate human health potential. Create environments using a blend of federal, re, federal state, local, and private resources. Decline in um, invasive and complex medical interventions because people want to solve their own problems. That I agree with. I, it's not, we, we need to teach our bodies to cure the problems. Bodies heal themselves. And as healing becomes a popular topic in, in this digital age. And now actually this is getting down to 14%, again, high. And then we get rid of these actuarial-based health insurance plans. <coughs> Some global lifetime health spending accounts. The fold in your problems you have from your poor, your genes give you these uh, inherent disadvantages. Then you get, I guess, a bigger health spending account. But your health spending account is, is normalized to what you come in with. And then you spend it in what, how you want. And you need to beat the odds. So, Spend less than you, you, you can, and then you can presumably buy video games with the rest. So anyway, this is another positive view. And actually, like the first positive view, <coughs> it's actually, I say, it's focused on changing in the life, the life, uh, life views and the mechanism for uh, the, the way people move forward. And it's sort of interesting they came across. There's rather little discussion here. Of revolutions, you, I mean, people assume, actually, as far as I can see in these positive views, that you will understand through genomics and proteomics 
how to cure the difficult diseases. So that's the end of this uh, um, lesson 12, and the last uh, few lessons discuss uh, a little about gene sequencing and some technical work focusing actually on work done at Indiana University. So this is Jeffrey Fox signing out from lesson 12. The Robert Woods Johnson Foundation study of 2032. And we need to make certain that we get into these positive views. So please help us. Thank you.